this is video number six, the firmware instructions for a new install or upgrading your current install of Repitrel, the software that drives your HiRail 3D printers. Uh, as always, we're starting from HiRail3D.net. In previous videos, we've gone three steps, uh, one through five, and now we're gonna do our firmware. So we'll click on the firmware screen. You've already downloaded the files in step five, step four when you did your Repitrel install. But we're going to look here on the screen. This will tell you which version of Repitrel you have going in red, what version of firmware you have in the blue and purple or magenta is the, the protocol you're using to talk to your printer. So our first step is to launch our Repitrel program. Now, if you're connected normally through the tablet or through the uh, six-sided USB B port on the side of your printer, you should be able to just connect normally and go through and flash your firmware. If you're already on a late edition of version three or already on version four. However, if you're on an, a version two or an early version three software package, or if you're coming in and plugging into the side of your spine with your USB cable and not going through the tablet interface board, then you're going to have to follow the, the more detailed instructions on taking the rear cover off or otherwise getting access to your motion controller and putting your USB cable in. So what do I mean by that? We're going to go to File, Update Firmware, 407 Motion Controller. Okay. Now I've already changed my cable out so now it says connected and that's highlighted in green so we know we're ready to do a programming. But the details here if you don't see that connected uh, you're going to have to go through these steps. Also like I said if you're plugged into the side of your spine for some reason you've uh, had an issue with your motherboard or you just you, you had USB problems or something else has gone wrong. You're going to have to take your little mini, not micro, but mini USB cable from your controlling device, from the computer you're working on, and run that into the back. This picture here is of the back of the System 30M or the engine standard resolution. If you're on a high-res engine, you have to tilt it back and get to the inside of it. And if you're on a Hydra, there's a control panel on the lower right side of the printer that will give you access to all the electronics. And you're going to plug into the top here, but if you're already connected, ignore that. Plug into the top, you're going to put this boot run switch. It's got system on the left and flash to the right. We're going to move it to the left so that we're on the boot config. And we're going to press this reset button and then you'll get this connected. And we're going to go to select file, which will bring us up to the correct folder. And we're going to take, there should be two files there. One's for the 30M and the standard engine, the engine SR. The other ones for the high-res engine and the Hydras, the 16As. Today I'm doing an engine standard resolution, so I'm going to take this file and I'm just going to say program. If you had one of the Hydras, they have a different motion controller. They have a 429 instead of a 407. You use the, the other one, the other DFU file. When that's done, the window goes away. Everything is good to go. Now because I had the, the USB cable on the side, I'm going to just reconfigure my USB and I'm going to turn that switch back to, to, uh, to flash and do a reset. And when I do, you'll see it auto connect, or at least you should. And right up here, we can see it already connected. And it's connected to engine SR underscore 30M, 4.100D. If we bring this divider up a little bit, we'll see that we did connect. And if we look at our interface tab, you'll see initially the communications port was disabled, but now we're connected. And it's the UART protocol. So everything is golden for operating our printer now. If we go here, we should see lab coordinates. If I go to home, brings me to zero, zero. If I go to my predefined park location, 
set currently for 120, 120. All right, that's all good, but now we have to flash the firmware onto our heads and our hotbed controller. Going back to our browser window, we can see that these are the steps that we've done for the motion controller. And then here we go for our hot heads and our hot bed controller. We have to also upgrade their firmware. All right. The latest will be in part of your download. So I'm going to connect the ST link. Let's bring this up on screen. Update firmware hot head controller. It's the same as a hot bed also. So this little USB drive looking thing is actually an adapter, a USB adapter and programming tool. And we're going to connect to our hot bed controller and our print heads one at a time. They do not have to be on the yoke. In fact, it's better if you take them off the printer. Connect them to the ST link. Connect that to your, um, your computer and flash it. Now we're going to navigate to find the right file. We're going to do heads, beds, current version. You shouldn't even have a pick and place in your bundle. I'm going to make a new bundle this week. So it'll just be the heads and beds. We're going to select that. And we're going to program the head. All right, that's done. If you get the progress bar, I've never seen the progress bar start and not work. So if you see that blue progress bar, even if you don't see the success message at the end, you were successful. Okay. Then we're going to do any other boards we want. I'm going to disconnect my hot bed controller. You'll see it disappear from the screen behind us. And I'm going to plug my ST link into it. And I'm going to program it right now. I'm going to program my hot bed controller now. Same thing. Same file. Program. Now, if you plug your ST link in and you don't get, you just get a little red message that flashes up that says it fails, you can always go to help list USB devices on this computer. And that sometimes comes out in the background. Here we go. And if we look at this, we'll see the UART, that's our motion controller, and this is the ST link. So if I disconnect that, that guy should go away. And if I plug them back in, sometimes for whatever reason, the install doesn't go too smoothly and you double click on him, it'll bring up properties. If you look at the hardware tab, you'll see a little hazard sign, like a yield sign with an exclamation point. If you see that, then go to properties, go to change settings, go to driver. Update driver, browse my computer for software, and have it go to, not users, have it go to C colon Repetrel. And pick select that directory and next. Here it's telling me the drivers are already installed. If you had some problem, this would reinstall those drivers and uh, it would make it all work. Also, if you have an, an occasional issue, you can unload or unplug the ST link and plug it into a different USB port. That will also force a reload of drivers. All right, everything looks good. We flashed firmware on these two, two heads, the hotbed controller and the print head, as well as doing the firmware on the motion controller. But that's not all there is to it. So for the motion controller, we're going to have to pick the values. So what does that mean? It means we're going to go here and go settings printer. And you can actually read the values, the motion settings off of your printer. I always recommend reading the settings off your printer and then saving them to a file. I call it an as found file. So I will say as found EHR in today's date 2020. 03.19. So I can always go back to my initial settings if I want to. Now I'm going to load the proper settings. And in my printer settings file, you'll see the 16A models with the different configurations. 
Uh, here's one for the ESR and 30M are the same. That's the one I'm going to take. I'm going to apply these settings. And then I'm actually going to flash these settings to the motion controller. Yes, I do want to write them. Okay, that'll take a few seconds. This is also where you can config configure various things, your park position, your hardware setup. Uh, you shouldn't mess with any of these without talking to us, but they are there for, configure, for you to configure. Under hardware info, if you've already got a license, it's going to show up here. Um, if you don't, we'll cover that when we get to the step for the firmware license, which is the last one, step nine. We're going to click OK, and we're going to go ahead and plug our hotbed controller back in. Now there's another video that shows you how to disconnect it because the way that it's set up, you can't actually get to the programming port without taking the board off the printer, um, uh, really on any of our printers. So now it's there again, we see it. Now that it's loaded, I'm gonna right click on the window. I'm gonna say load settings from file. And this is a hotbed controller for an ESR or 30M. ADC, these two files are the same. I just didn't want people to think there wasn't one with their name on it. We're going to open that. That's changed all these settings and set them to the proper settings here. All right, and on the last tab, I'm going to right click on the flash button and store these values. It's the exact same process for the head. When you're doing the head, you're going to load settings from file. You're going to pick, is it an MK1250? Is it a Krakatoa 2? Uh, is it an SDS 5? Is it a UV pen? Whatever it happens to be, you're going to load those values and then go to the last page and right click on the flash button to store them. All right, that pretty much covers uh, the firmware page. We're going to wind this up and the next one we're going to go to the settings.